got some past exam questions you can test yourself with on periodicity. So as always, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So click on that, have a go at the questions, and then play on for the answers. So first question, which trend is correct? We'll look at all the options and uh, decide whether they're correct or not. Melting point decreases from lithium to carbon. That's not correct because they actually increase. The boiling points decrease from fluorine to iodine. That's incorrect because the boiling points of the halogens increase as you go down the group. The first ionization energy decreases from lithium to cesium. So that's like a group trend in first ionization energy. They do actually decrease. So that statement is correct. And we may as well look at D as well. So uh, first ionization energy increases from nitrogen to oxygen. Well, obviously that's incorrect. And that's because that's your P4 configuration for oxygen. So you've got a paired electron in the P subshell and uh, it's slightly repelled, makes it easy to remove. So the answer was C. Moving on to question two, we can only choose from the first 18 elements. So that's hydrogen to argon. So which fits the following descriptions? Element with an isotope that can be represented like that. Well, the key thing there is that six. It's proton number is six, so it's got to be carbon. Element with the strongest metallic bonding in period three. Well, the three metals in period three are sodium, magnesium, aluminium. So it's aluminium because it's got the uh, biggest charge. It's got the most delocalized electrons. Element that forms a three minus ion. So it's gaining three electrons to get the same electron structure as neon. Well, neon's got 10 electrons, so this must have had seven, so it's nitrogen. So moving on to the fourth question, it's quite tricky this one. So I've drawn this up to sort of help me explain uh, what the answer is. So if we think about the trends, the general trends in ionization energy is that they decrease as you go down any group and they increase in general as you go across any period. So basically, our answer is going to be in period three. So that's sodium to argon. Now, it's the third ionization energy that we're interested in. So if you think about sodium, it's got one electron in its outer shell. The second and third ionization energy electrons are going to be in the inner shell. So it's going to be really high, to, a large amount of energy to get those out. Um, likewise for magnesium, so it's got two electrons in its outer shell, so they're relatively easy to get out. And the third one, the one we're interested in, is really hard, so that's going to be high as well. And then when we get aluminium, its third electron is still in that sort of outer shell. It's not in an inner shell. So this we can think about this trend now. So that there is going to have the lowest third ionization energy. So at the end of all that, the answer was AL. And the final question, we're basically looking for a big jump to establish which group it's in. So we've got the first big jump there between the second and third ionization energy. So it's got to be in group two. It can't be beryllium because beryllium only has four electrons. So it's going to be magnesium. Question three, I've already written the answer up there. So the trend in the atomic radius lithium to fluorine decreases across the period. That's the case for all periods. And that's down to the extra proton in the nucleus each time. But we've got the same shielding. Don't forget to say that. Students often do. And therefore, there's a stronger nuclear attraction for the outer shell electrons. And that sort of pulls the uh, atomic radius in, makes it smaller. Question four now. So the third ionization energy of aluminium is represented like that. That's going from the two plus gaseous. Don't forget the state symbol. Two plus gaseous ion to the three plus gaseous ion. You're not removing all three electrons at once. Remember, it's done stepwise. Moving on to the next part of the question, we've got to show the successive ionization energies of aluminium. Um, we've got the first one already drawn for us. So basically, the three electrons in the outer shell, there's going to be a general increase. The successive ionization energies always increase as you uh, remove them because you've still got the same number of protons in the nucleus. Um, but you've got fewer electrons each time, so the remaining electrons are held on more strongly. So there's that sort of general increase, but when you get to the fourth electron for aluminium, you've broken into a new shell close to the nucleus, so there's a big jump up in energy, ionization energy, and then the remaining seven in that shell are going to show that general increase. And then the last two electrons in the 
very inner shell, they're going to be really high, but show that little increase at the end there. So the important thing there is to show that general increase and the big jumps between 3 and 4 and 11 and 12. Question 5, already written up the fact that chlorine and bromine are both simple covalent non-polar molecules. So the intermolecular forces that need to be broken to get these to boil are induced dipole forces. So if you remember the strength of the induced dipole force increases with the number of electrons in the molecule. So the answer to this is bromine's got more electrons than chlorine. So bromine has stronger induced dipole forces. Got to mention specifically the type of intermolecular force between its molecules, so more energy is needed to overcome them. Question six, so you can obviously see that the first ionization energy is increasing, so that's due to, we've kind of already said this for the decrease in atomic radius across a period, increase in number of protons in the nucleus, same shielding, don't forget to say that, so therefore the nuclear attraction for the outer electron, that's the one that's removed, um, increases. Next question, so I'm using equations to help explain this one. If So if I was to write the first ionization energy equations for diamond or graphite, I'd basically be writing the same equation. And the important thing to note is that ionization energies are always um, measured under gaseous conditions, so it really doesn't make a difference whether it's diamond or graphite. It's the same equation. Okay, so the final question, see I've already written a few bits up that I'm going to mention in a moment. Uh, the key to a question like this is to make sure that you use the correct terminology. It's so easy to put the wrong term in, the wrong place, and you just start losing marks. I've noticed that with uh, with my students, and I'm sure they're not any different to the rest of the country. So basically, it's all down to bonding and structure. So you can see I've already written up there, aluminium's got a giant metallic structure, silicon's giant covalent, phosphorus, simple covalent. So what we've got to get into our answer is what forces need to be broken to melt the substance and what kind of particles does that force exist between. And then at the end we'll just come up with some kind of relative strength of forces uh, from the melting points. So I'm going to start with silicon. Silicon's got the highest melting point, so that's telling us that the most amount of energy is needed to break the covalent bonds, so the forces broken to melt, between the silicon atoms, particles, the force acts between. And there's the structure in the giant covalent structure. So moving on to aluminium, I'm just saying it's got the intermediate melting point. Less energy is needed, obviously, than the silicon to break the metallic bonds. So they're the forces that are broken between the aluminium three plus ions and the delocalized electrons, the particles, in the giant metallic structure. Okay, so for phosphorus, I'm saying phosphorus has the lowest melting point, so the least amount of energy is needed to break. Here's the force, the induced dipole forces, because phosphorus is a non-polar molecule. The force acts between, you just need to say phosphorus molecules, but it's actually got the formula P4, so try and get that in if you can. Uh, the P4 molecules in the simple covalent structure. And my final statement would be something like this. The covalent bond in the silicon must be stronger than the metallic bond in the aluminium, and then the induced dipole forces between the phosphorus molecules are the weakest.